and welcome back to the Old Rope Salvage Workshop. You might notice that there's a lack of a tin beside me, but uh, don't worry, he's all right. I'll make him a cup of tea in a minute. So it's early June now, it's still raining. It's a beautiful foggy day outside. Um, so summer's going well. We're looking forward to lots of really exciting things coming up in the next um, month or two. So stay tuned. Anyway, I'm back. I've been back for a week or so now. I don't make a big appearance in this video, but I thought I'd come back just in time to take some of the glory for all the work that Tim's been doing in my absence. And uh, this week it's all about welding and welding the cab here behind me. So Tim's been really hard at work all these last few weeks while I've been away, doing a magnificent job. So I hope you enjoy the video, hope you enjoy all the action welding with Tim. Stay tuned to the end because I like to get in on the action right at the end there when I come back. And if you enjoy the video, don't forget to give us a like, subscribe to the channel and uh, all that stuff. Yeah, enjoy the video. After several happy weeks of paint scraping, Tim was now able to identify some of the problem areas on the cab, of which there are, well, a few. For a 46 year old truck, the Bedford isn't in too bad a shape, at least so Tim tells me, but there are inevitably areas of rust and corrosion which need cutting out and welding, as well as non-factory holes which need filling. There is an absolute load of tiny rust holes and areas which have been welded in the past, some of which also need cutting out and redoing. A couple of the worst areas are the sills, which need taking apart and investigating. These are probably the most complicated areas to weld and are undoubtedly hiding some hidden horrors behind the seals as well. These will possibly need to be completely remade as we really want the cab to last a long time as well as to look good so no quick patch up jobs in this workshop. The roof has dozens of small holes where all manner of things have been screwed to it in the past and there are more rust holes inside the cab all along the floor. At the back of the cab along what we refer to as the parcel shelf this area of rusty holes will also need replacing. It's a fiddly job lots of little bits rather than big panels so it's a good thing that Tim is feeling so chipper. Yeah, it's a bit of fun isn't it? Better get, the, better get the old welder out. Possibly he's just having a little high after his shopping trip. So yeah, panel of, uh, was needing some sheet steel to make all the little bits of panel I need and um, went off to uh, go and look for some and saw the quantity that I needed, which is about a quarter of the size of that. And it actually worked out cheaper to buy a whole sheet than the bit I wanted. So I think this came in with VAT and everything at 36 quid. Maybe more than I need at the moment, but I'm sure it'll come in handy for something. I can also make more mistakes. With the giant piece of bargain sheet steel safely in his possession, Tim began by making a cardboard template of the first sill panel before taking it off the cap, in case it were to get damaged during removal. That's, that's flat. This small bit of forward planning proved most worthwhile indeed, and served to remind us that thinking at least three steps ahead all the time is a frustrating but necessary part of the process. Well, I'm pretty glad that I made a replacement panel for this before I removed the old one. Uh, here's the replacement piece, and uh, that's what the other one, the old one, looked like by the time that it had been removed. So, uh, a bit beaten up. And um, I'm going to work on this other side here, this piece under here. Um, where the little holes are, um, just here and down here. By taking the panel off the other side, I was able to sort of see what's underneath it and all the other bits involved in down there. So I kind of know what's underneath it and it's not good. <laughs> but I think I need to cut the whole piece off and remake that whole bottom bit. 
I'm even thinking about taking this other side off, even though it's good on the other side. I'm thinking about taking this panel off and making another one then. But as ever, I'm just making it up as I go along. All drilled out. Uh, panel doesn't look too bad really on the outside. <coughs> the main, main reason I'm taking it off is so that I can get to the one underneath and um, it's not a difficult one to make but it's, it was trickier to get off than the other side but it's pretty messy underneath there. Bit of repair, obviously the whole bottom piece here and that's why I took it off so that I could because uh, I knew that there was some other metal inside here so that I can remove it from these oh no the truck's on the floor so the holes underneath here well they got a little bit bigger got some uh, holes in this bit and all of this back piece here very rusty the panel itself looked pretty good but by the time you've removed it all, yeah. So yeah, a new piece got to be made up for all this bit here. Probably gonna put a lip on the back of it and weld it back to this piece here, which is quite nice. Uh, I can't get up behind it, so so a little fold up here, a little bit on on here, and then all of this bottom piece. I'm gonna have to make all of that with a return edge up to up here somewhere. So I'm gonna have to cut away this piece here and weld in a bit with its return, all the bit off the bottom of it and all the same time I've got to like not lose where these are, all these lines go to. What starts off as a little tiny hole quite often ends up a much bigger one. Uh, what I've been doing is it could be quite awkward with something like this if you cut away everything to start off with you don't know where anything goes, where the posi positioning is so what I've been doing is um, as I've gone along I've taken some templates so that I know exactly where everything lines up and where it should be and I've been trying to carefully replace it's a bit snug one so taking out the bits of uh, repairs like uh, this panel that was all here the Swiss cheesy one uh, I've kind of removed that I managed to not have to cut out the back piece there because it's uh, reinforced here so I managed to cut it along here and uh, as I go along before I start cutting away all the other bits uh, making the panels to to sort of snugly fit so that it perfectly keeps all the alignment uh, and where the bottom lip is here and everything so along with my cardboard when I cut out the next bit I've got something to line it up with and uh, keep that alignment going hopefully all the bolts and things that are connected to underneath here and where the wings come round and everything will all match up later when bolted together. It shouldn't be too much of a problem because these wings have quite a bit of a gap underneath them anyway. So it's only, and this wing here sort of stops here and overlaps the other one. So I, I don't see it as a problem, but it's pretty good practice to keep so that like, it stays kind of the right shape, I guess. So yeah, that one's done. I'm, uh, I don't think I'm going to tack it in yet because uh, it, it, it fits really snugly in there and I don't think I need to put any welds uh, to allow me to get to it and also I want to clean up underneath it as well, a bit of blast underneath it, clean all that out, get a bit of paint in there and stuff. So uh, yeah, one panel at a time. This is a tricky one really, all up here because this is a quite a structural sort of cross member and I need to be able to cut, I'm going to take out the whole of this pan, the whole of this and make it up in one go and it's got two um, threaded sort of bolt holes in here and I've managed to um, sort of keep that so uh, it's a bit bit nasty looking but uh, I think it will clean up enough to be able to when the new plate goes onto it weld that onto it and uh, again keeping the alignment of the bolt holes 
This one up here is tricky because it's hidden behind everything. But I think I've managed to sort of drill out the, um, the spot welds that are holding it. And if I can peel this carefully away, hopefully leave the threaded portion of it intact. And then when I come to weld in it, I'll uh, pre-drill some holes in the bottom panel, stick a bolt in here to pull it down tight, and then uh, put my tacks in. That's the theory. Fiddly old stuff though. Very fiddly. Right. Yep. More cutting out, and um, it's kind of weird, really. You, you cut out all the rusty metal, and it actually looks better, even though there's a uh, there's a lot less there. I've kind of gone back to where the metal is good, and where I think I can put a good weld in. It's sort of cut off this uh, main uh, strong part here. We've retained the old bolt holes for one of the side steps, and. Um, so yeah, this is the new piece that's going to go in. Obviously not in cardboard. I'll probably have to make a slightly more stronger one. That goes up in there. I can put some spot welds where they originally would have been into all the corner pieces. And it leaves quite a strong piece on uh, that I can get to from the inside and the outside. And um, once, the, once these have been cleaned up, I'll be able to like weld through these into the panel. So, it's getting there, it's getting there, almost brand new. The original template I made when the uh, panel was still in place so this was pressed in inside the panel uh, which I then used to make this one every time you make one of these uh, templates it's quite tricky because you have to take into account the fact or the thickness of the steel that's in there uh, but this one fitted inside the old one and as a double check with this I can use it to fit in my one I've just made and that fits in there pretty good. Of course, the pattern piece that made this one <coughs> is slightly different because it wasn't designed to go inside, it was actually that piece. So, uh, yeah, slightly different when it goes in that one. Um, this bit ends up being a bit bigger once this is inside it. Yeah? Yeah, just a case of seeing if it, I mean, there's going to be some tweaking. I've left it a little bit big, just a touch all the way down. It's obviously easier to take stuff off than it is to put it back on. So, uh, oh, it's a little bit long, but, oh no. Yeah, I'll try it in place and see, uh, see what needs taking off. But it'll be a gradual bit by bit until it slots in nicely. Weekend. Yeah, just a little bit. 
Tim continued to make the repair to the panel, which was originally taken apart because it had holes in it. He did briefly consider just patching it from the outside, putting another layer of steel over the top, but didn't really want to bodge it, especially as this panel is where the steps to the cab bolt on. In the end, there is always a balance to be found between bodging something and doing a complete restoration job. Just a little bit more off and tidy that bit up there. And... Jobs are good. In so much as time and budget will allow, we aim to err towards the latter. Yeah, I might get the little hand files in that little bit there, round that out properly. But yeah, just a little tweak and she'll be fitting good. The next step was to get the vapour blaster out and clean off all the rust and residue from inside the panel, making sure all the surfaces were nice and clean before starting on the reassembly of the panel and welding all the new pieces together. All my panels are made up. It's like a, it's a kit now. I quite like it. So all the holes have been pre-drilled for uh, where it's gonna have like weld through, like spot welds. Uh, apart from this one, um, I'm gonna to wait to do this one until it's the last one that goes on. So I'll get all these in place and work out exactly where the nice bits to weld to are. Yeah, it's just a case of gluing them back together. Um, I'm gonna put a bit of paint in a few places which I won't be able to get to later. Uh, and there's a couple of little tiny little holes that are gonna be done with little pieces. But yep, these are gonna go in. All these little holes that Tim is putting into the final panel are to replicate the original factory spot welds where they'd have a machine that would have two prongs and it would squeeze in and an electric current would go across, pinch the panels together and put a weld in, fusing the two pieces of metal together. <laughs> well, we don't have one of those. So what Tim is doing is drilling holes in the panel so he can spot weld through them to the piece of metal underneath, replicating the machine. The holes need to be large enough to get a decent weld in them. And, well, there are a lot of them. Well, that's the end result. I'm uh, I'm pretty happy with that. It's it's come out really good. Obviously, it's going to be finished off and painted, but uh, this is the bit that was kind of bad originally. Uh, we had rust holes in the bottom of all this, all around here. And I was worried about it because I wanted to keep the um, the captive nuts that hold the footstep on. There was also some rust spots up in here. And obviously after taking this off, there was a lot more rust inside. The alignment is all really good, so it's not changed. And uh, apart from the fact there's a couple of spot welds, like little welds on here, where originally it was spot welded through. I don't even know if you'd be able to tell. Well, on close, close inspection, you'd be able to tell. But um, yeah, it just looks pretty good. Looks pretty factory, really. So the welding continues here in the workshop. We're getting uh, getting through it bit by bit. 
And what I'm using at the moment is this uh, little MIG welder here. I was kindly given this by Russ. Thank you, Russ. He hadn't tried it before, and when I got it, it didn't have any of the bits, so I uh, got a new gun for it. And at the moment, it appears to be working pretty cool. We're also using this um, rather massive bottle of carbon dioxide, <laughs> which isn't, again, the most ideal thing to be using. Uh, normally, you'd use a mix of argon and carbon dioxide. I think it's 75% argon and 25% carbon dioxide gives you a better weld. But we're, I'm using what I've got, you know, it was free. It's part of the fire suppression system on an old boat. You come to help me weld? Most of the front's done now. Uh, I've just been tidying up the rear parcel shelf and patched up in here. I don't think I've ever seen so many uh, holes in a parcel shelf. But then saying that, I've never seen so many holes in a roof either. There's another about 30 odd up there. So yeah, there's a lot of holes to plug up. Uh, so yeah, underneath here, yeah, it don't look great. The skinning on this panel here comes around. This back panel up here bends around. And then the, this one sits on top of it. So there's three layers of metal that are in here. But fortunately, the, this panel looks like it just sits on top and then it was, um, Probably these two were welded together first, spot when welded, and then this one was put on top. So hopefully if I can cut out all that I need to, I can clean up the edge. Hopefully there's not too much damage in that, and uh, put a new piece back in. So it's all fiddly stuff really. Um, lots more cardboard templates. I can't get a grinder in there or anything. It's very fiddly. Literally had to break it out with a pair of pliers this uh, seam yeah very fiddly I think I'm, I think I'm gonna need a new bit of metal condensed down into uh, a couple of minutes <laughs> hang on a minute who's this <sighs> right the welding on the truck is finally finished so it looks like next time we're gonna be doing some painting Yay. <laughs> Well, actually, next time we're going to be doing some more welding. And yes, next time I really will be participating in the action. I'll be taking my first welding lesson. I don't know if you need to tie your hair up, like you don't want to set it on fire. Okay. We'll be tackling the 742 holes in the cab roof. Tim will be doing some more shopping. Let's close some cash and uh hopefully fingers crossed this is going to work and there will of course be much banter bills. <laughs> thanks for watching see you here again soon i've been lonely for a month or more big old stretch of lonesome road been a long time since i saw your face nobody home to feel my plate like your catfish black and you serve it on a platter you like the truth i reckon you serve it on Taking